individual and community levels, especially in the face of a culture of hate that is spreading across the world. Today, we will reflect on this topic from the viewpoint of Buddhism. Our first talk began at the end of August with Dr. Kumar Saptashi, Chairman of the Maharashtra Gandhi Foundation, Kothrud, reflecting on the above topic from the viewpoint of Hinduism. The talks have been held depending on the availability of the concerned speaker. Today's talk has been delayed partly due to the many responsibilities our speaker holds. Our speaker for tonight is Professor Dr. Vilas Adam. He is presently Professor and Director of Lifelong Learning and Extension Department, as well as Head Economics Department of Savitri Phule Pune University. Besides his academic interests, he is very involved in the concerns of the poor and the marginalized. Professor Adam began his career as an economics lecturer at the Arts, Commerce and Science College, Nastapur, District Pune, in 1992. He has published more than 300 articles about Phule, Shah Maharaj, Ambedkar, the progressive movement, and the upliftment of the weaker sections of society in various newspapers, magazines, and periodicals. Between 1999 and 2022, he has published 23 books, both in Marathi and English. Additionally, he has an experience of 33 long years in the field of teaching, research, and extension. He is associated with different universities in Pune and abroad, and has received many awards for his intellectual contributions. On behalf of the Snare Southern Institute for the Study of Religion and St. Vincent College of Commerce, I especially thank Dr. Adav for making time to participate in our seminar and share his insights on our topic. I now request Dr. Adav to begin his presentation. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Father De Cruz, for giving this uh, opportunity. Uh, now I will start my uh, presentation on Buddhism. Yeah. Yes, I'll show the uh, PowerPoint presentation video. I'll share with you, all of you. Yes. Thank you so much for Sneha Sadan and St. Vincent College of Commerce, Pune, for this uh, online interfaith talks. I'll uh, speak on uh, Buddhism. This is very uh, important topic nowadays. Uh, now you can see the entire world uh, tremendously facing the materialistic things and they lost the peace. So Buddhism and peace, that is the uh, very uh, important topic nowadays. What Buddha taught us. So what you think you become, what you feel you attract, what you imagine you create. Buddhism and Buddha. I will uh, just uh, briefly give the introduction uh, about the Buddhism. Buddhism was founded by Gautam Buddha. Buddha was born as a Prince Siddhartha at Lumbini near Kapilvastu. At present in Nepal, he was born in uh, 566 BC. Dr. Adav, your yeah. screen cannot be seen. Your screen we cannot see. Okay, okay, okay. Let. Ah, okay. Now it is okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, let me start by giving you all a brief introduction. 
Buddhism was founded by Gautam Buddha. Buddha was as a prince Siddhartha at Lumbini, near Kapil Vastu. He was son of the Siddhodana and Mahamaya. Siddhodana was the chief of the Shakya. Uh, Father, you can see, see in yes, my... Yes, clear now. Thank yeah. you. Shakya clan. Due to this, Buddha <coughs> was also known as the Shakya Muni. His mother died either giving birth to him or after seven days. Siddhartha was brought up by his maternal aunt Prajapati Gautami. This gave him the name Gautama. He was married to Yashodhara and had a son Rahul. He left his home, he left his uh, palace actually at that, that, that time, ancient time. He was the uh, uh, prince. He left a palace for peace. There is a, you can see the nowadays in a, we are entering the 21st century. The people, uh, for li, li, uh, Buddha was left palace for peace. Nowadays, uh, people are live uh, uh, peace for palace. That is a uh, contradiction. So he left his palace at the age of 29 to become an ascetic. This event is called Mahabhiksha Karma. Mahabhiksha Karma. The idea of renunciation occurred to Buddha after he saw the four different states of man, Sikh man, old man, corpse man, and ascetic. Buddha wandered for seven years and at the age 35, attained enlightenment at Uruvela while meditating under the people tree, fig tree, ficus religiosa, on the banks of the river Niranjana. This tree come to known as Bodhi tree and the place become Buddha Gaya. Now is situated in Bihar. He gave his first sermon at Sarnath near Varanasi. This event is called Dhamma Chakra Pravatana. Dhamma Chakra Pavatana in Pali. He died in 483 BC under the Sal tree in Kushinagar. The slide is not changed. Ah, in, uh, yeah, in change. Okay, the term Buddha, the term Buddha means enlightenment, enlightened one. Okay, is it see, Father? Hello, Father? The slide has not come. Uh, yes, just a minute, just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. Yeah. Right. Is it okay, Father? Yes, what is Buddhism? Yes. Now, this is a uh, very important question in the present era. What is Buddhism? Buddhism is a major world religion or in a better sense, philosophy. You know, for the, uh, philosophy is very good to read, very good to talk. But act according to philosophy is very difficult uh, in a today's world, materialistic world. It is the fourth largest religion of the world and has about 300 million people living by it. The, it explains the purpose of life, injustices, and inequality around the world. It also helps people by providing the way of life that will lead to true happiness. Buddhism is a religion based on the teaching of Siddhartha Gautama. He came to call the Buddha, which means awakened one. Uh, this is the very relevant question that enlightenment. The Buddha spent many years in the company of saints, and finally, one day, when he was sitting under the Bodhi tree, 
in Buddha Gaya, Bihar. He was blessed with the divine light. This was the turning point as realized that the truth is within every human beings. The search outside was pointless. The whatever things, the uh, enlightenment, Buddhism is nothing but is a enlightenment. Try to enlighten yourself. That that is the thing. After this Siddhartha was known all over the world as Buddha, the enlightened one. He was also known by name of Shakyamuni, which means the ascetic of the Shakya tribe. This awakening, this awakening was achieved during a night of meditation, which passed through various stages as illumination that Gautama had sought slowly welled up in his heart. The teaching of Buddha, this is very important. The, these are the four noble truths. Suffering and unhappiness are a part of human life. Suffering comes from our desires for pleasure and material goods. People can overcome desires and ignorance and reach nirvana. People can overcome desires and ignorance by following an eightfold path that leads to wisdom, enlightenment and salvation. This, these are the path of Buddhism. Practicing proper concentration, controlling feeling and thoughts, free one's minds of evils, holding a job that does not hurt others, respecting life and pro prosperity, saying nothing to hurt to others, deciding to resist evils, knowledge of truth, that is the we love, nirvana. That is the stages. This noble eightfold, this in uh, Pali also we call the eight samyaka, eight uh, ashta samyaka. This is the the noble eightfold: right understanding, right intention, right speech, right action, right living, right efforts, right attentiveness right concentration. These things are interrelated uh, to before you are going to the action. Uh, this, this is our Sammeka. These are the eight Sammekas. This is the balanced life. This is the, the, uh, the balanced life. We can follow the uh, eight noble uh, eight noble fold path. This teaching of Buddha, this is the five precepts, five gems. Mm -hmm. They are not commandment, but goes to the ensure the right beaver. You know, the present era, this uh, Buddha's teaching is very important for each and every mankind. First, do not harm any living things. Do not steal, mm -hmm. taking only what is given. Avoid over uh, stimulations means anything is uh, more than uh, any excess things, over things. You should have to avoid the balance. It's required. Do not say unkind things. You know, for the uh, particularly uh, the people, the young generation. I'll go to the last point. Uh, do not take alcohol or drugs. You know, that Buddha's teaching is till today, it is more relevant for the each and every human being, the particularly the young generation. Now, the alcohol and drugs, that uh, steps taken by uh, uh, mobile and the uh, media also. The Android phones, nowadays the student from the 10, 12 on, or onwards, graduation, post-graduation student, they have become more addicts. 
uh, by using the uh, Android phone, mobile, and media also. So excess is like a uh, uh, poison. So these are these are five gems is very important for living life of every uh, 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 common people also. Please begin with expectation scenes. When there is a the desire in Marathi, in Pali, we call the Trushna. If Trushna is the end, the peace is begins. Peace is started beginning. What is the significance of this symbol? We can have the uh, this uh, four or five symbols. We can explain uh, two, three, the important one. Buddhism and symbols. Whether it is about the inner world of a person or his or her relation with the outside world, this is an important concept in Buddhist space. Swastika. Swastika is an ancient Buddhist symbol that is used interchangeably with the Dhamma wheel. We call the Dhamma wheel Dhamma Chakra. The term Swastika originate from the word Devanagari, meaning auspicious, instrumental in one's well-being. The swastika represent eternity, longevity, peace and abundance and well-being. Lotus. Buddha was very fond of the flower lotus. Lotus flower is perhaps the most well-known symbol of peace. It is shown having the eight petals signifying the eightfold path thought by Buddha. The flower emerges from, from the mud which personal, personifies evils, worldly distractions, terminal and more, more to rise Above it all float on surface of the water peacefully. In a calm and in the storm, thus the lotus flower represents inner peace or peace in the stage of being. Om. When chanted silently or loudly during the meditation, the mantra invokes Compassion clears the mind, bring, bringing inner peace to chatter, chatter. Thus, the symbol Om represents inner peace. This is very important for doing the yoga and meditation, the Om. When Dr. Uh, Ambedkar passed away, that Om, Pani, Om uh, Mani Padme, that mantra was saying after his Mahanirvana. Meditating Buddha, Buddha's depictions in a meditating position with his eyes closely, fully, peace and calm. Buddhists take up this pose when trying to in induce inner peace within their hearts and mind. Buddhism posters peace, love, harmony, brotherhood, and unity. Buddhism and peace are always associated with each and others from time immortal. It is a very good question in present situation. What is peace? Peace is a freedom from disturbance. Peace, peace is something which is within oneself, with our family, neighbors and the world at large. Peace is a tranquility. Peace is a commitment not to harm, but also to nature all individuals. That is very good questions. So we'll have to deal with the peace. So Buddha's teaching is very important. Peace is a stress-free state of security and calmness. Peace is not absence of conflict, but the ability to manage conflict 
constructively. Do not let the behavior of others destroy your inner peace. It's a, it's a beautiful quote by Dalai Lama. Promises yourself to be so strong that nothing can be disturbed your peace of mind. Buddhism and world peace. See, this is very important topic in uh, nowadays. Buddhism is not just a religion. Is a just a, Buddhism is not a religion, but Buddhism is a way of living life. Buddha always say in uh, moksha uh, in Pali or in Marathi also, moksha data nahi, me marga data hai. Buddhism is not a religion, but it is a wonderful living life. It is showing the path of wonderful living life. Then, in the context of present world situation, is more relevant today and you were before establishing the world peace. Buddhism has intimate association with the concept of peace. In its long history, we hardly find any evidences of violence, killings, or religious hatred in Buddhism. Buddhism wields only one sword, the sword of wisdom, and recognizes only one enemy, that is ignorance. The only way lasting peace could be established is by cultivating the enlightenment, peace in the mind of people. The only way a lasting peace could be established is by cultivating the enlightened peace in the minds of people. Buddha's teaching of overcoming evils helped humanity in achieving peace. It had tremendous impact on the general and social being of the society, thereby contributing the amenity, amity and social harmony it revived the spirit of social solidarity by putting an end to social conflict. The noble mission of the noble mission of Buddha helped not only India but also southeastern and far eastern countries to create condition for justice, political, and social economic stability, fraternity, peace, and social harmony. Establish peace within yourself. Make peace part of your life. These are the important points which is highlighted in this thing in my talk. Talk to person you hate. It's highly unlikely that you will want to do this. Who would if you hate someone? It feels better to just stay away. But this isn't healthy. Talk and make peace. Practice mindfulness. I know this sounds cheesy, but it's one of the most effective ways to overcome the grudges. It's long-term yet peaceful process and guarantees 100% success. Be more empathetic. Try to put yourself in the place of person you this detest. Detest chances are you will be understand their side of story and soon forgive them. Divert your mind in case everything fails. This is the last resort. Keep your distance, not just physically, but mentally as well. Don't think about it and keep yourself occupied with other important things. Accept what you can't change or control. You can't actually control your mind and simply tell him, be more peaceful just as you can't control life. Practice forgiveness. Feeling hurt 
every angry when someone's wrong you are so when someone wrongs you or treats you unfairly is an un understandable and completely natural practice mindfulness meditation accept pro proing more difficult than you imagine sometimes a guiding tool can make it easier to let go of distressing thoughts make time for yourself while too much time alone can lead the loneliness spending just right amount of time on your own could benefit your well being and lead to finding peace in fantastic world holding on to anger is like a drinking poison and expecting the other person to die we can't never obtain peace in the outer world until we make peace within ourselves this is a beautiful quote of dalai lama work for peace in your heart and in the world the famous and great sons she work for poor and down trodden people she can pick up any street children ha huh? and she love that mother teresa the peace begins with a smile do not learn how to react learn how to respond that is buddha's quote remember peace begin with us so let us all join in saying a prayer i think we can start you can join together for prayer uh, the world peace prayer i think we can start together we can start praying lead me from death to life we can start to pray together is it father yes sure sure you we will pray together yes all are welcome to join in the prayer uh, yeah start you lead us yeah lead me meet from death to life lead yeah lead me uh, from death to, to life, life from false from all suit to truth truth yeah once again we can first stanza we can repeat <clears throat> yes start together start together lead me lead from me death from to death life, to life. From falsehood to truth. Yes, second stanza, second one. Lead, lead me, me from despair to hope, from fear to trust. trust. Lead me from, from hate to love, to love from war to peace. To trust. Lord, from 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 war to peace. Father, okay. once again, we can repeat that third one. Lead me, lead from, me from hate to, to love. From, from war, war to, to peace. peace. Yes. Let peace, peace fill our hearts, our, hearts, our world, our, world, our the universe. universe. Good. Very good. This is a universal prayer, world, world prayer, peace prayer. Love the whole world as a mother loves her only child. The way to peace, middle way. Buddha always try to. uh give his opinion is uh uh for is uh, you know in first time at the sarnath in varanasi there was a five precepts you know pancham bhikkhu and he always giving the middle path the middle path is a way of success that is the buddha's uh, philosophy core idea of philosophy middle path madhyam marga have a mind that is open to everything and attached to nothing one moment can change a day one day can change a life and one life can change the world that is buddha's beautiful quote forgive people in your life even those who are not sorry for their actions holding on to anger only hurts you not to them 
love your enemies this is also in uh, jesus christ this is a wonderful philosophy the loves your your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that is beautiful quote there is no greater wealth this is a very important quote there is no greater wealth in this world than peace of mind there is no greater wealth in this world than peace of mind peace of mind is a uh, in other the supreme power we now see we are one family i think now we will play the two important videos we will play the uh, two important video we can start uh, that uh, we please uh, listen this video one and two first of all first we we'll... three things you should do to live a peaceful life one do not let others words to ruin your peace two see the good in everyone and everything and three fall in love with silence and stillness namo buddhaya now we will play the second one this marvelous human brain not well balanced with om hatness but combined with anger jealousy uh, so then instead of bring happiness or peace you see we really become the creator of problem war only i think exist among humanity is quite a pity now scientists also say constant anger hatred is actually eating our immune system anger very much to do with self centered attitude and altruistic attitude these people much happier too much self centered attitude then whole phenomena you see appears something uh, difficult and then fear anxiety creates anger i feel uh, education should include about our in a peace not through prayer but through understanding uh which emotion creates violence anger jealousy anxiety fear so this ultimately is rigid self-centered i i me 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 just to pray god not sufficient we must have knowledge when about anger comes then uh, use our intelligence and reduce the intensity of anger karuna increase compassion then anger automatically reduces today's reality entire humanity one community so instead of was a fighting now we should develop sort of as the universal love thank you very much one and all thank you very much yeah we'll stop thank you yeah thank you dr adam for your presentation Yeah. I invite the audience to ask for any <laughs> clarification they would like to, or any questions they would like to put forward, based on what Dr. Adam has presented.
Oh, my my Baba is here. Uh, Professor R. S. Deshpande is my Baba. Okay. Guru, I work under him. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Baba. Thank you. Professor Deshpande, welcome to our group. And we hope you will also enlighten us with some reflections. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, Baba. Yeah. Uh, it's nice, very nice to hear my dear Vilas. He has Thank spoken you. heart out. Yes. It's my way of life and it's your way of life that is described through. Yes, sir. The peace and tranquility can come only with the eight samyakas and five principles given by His Holiness or Buddha. One has to imbibe oneself into a kind of enlightenment that leads us away from jealousy, away from personal benefits, away from the inhuman behavior and away from most of the self-centricism, our pursuits of life are always filled with jealousy. And <laughs> Tathagat has told that we have to be away from that very poison. He illustrated it wonderfully. I must thank you all, and especially Professor Gibi Johnson, you have done really a wonderful job of organizing this lecture. I pray for all of you and for the peace of this world. Thank you. Thank you for Thank you. blessing. Uh, Father Dikru, sir. Baba also coming tomorrow in Pune. Okay. You Welcome. Can catch up. Yeah, next uh, session, Baba will also take. You can ask. Anyone else would like to ask any question from the audience? Sir, uh, ma put it there. Yes. Uh, thank you very much for a very good presentation on uh, uh, Buddha and the philosophy that you are talking about, the life philosophy. Uh, yeah. I was reflecting on one aspect that expectations can uh, destroy your peace to a great extent. Yeah. Now, expectation in the family, you expect from wife, you expect from children and children expect from uh, parents and teachers expect from uh, students and students expectation and the society, there is expectation from the government and the administration like that a lot of expectation as a personal we, we, we call uh, the trusna trusna leads the uh, destroy the peace yeah so personal expectations on one side and the societal or community expectation on the other side uh, maybe uh, i mean i am just reflecting on it whether this community expectation leads to violence or personal expectation leads to violence and how can we control this if you have personal expectation, you have already said through meditation, silence, yeah. and other yeah. things. How do we uh, control, or how do you, how do we uh, manage uh, communal expectation or community expectation, and which is leading to violence later? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, in the present uh, uh, situation, what is the two thousand five hundred? I go. Uh, Buddha give is a uh, yes, about uh, peace. The entire world is going to destruction. Is it that uh, uh, the uh, group behavior, uh, group behavior, also uh, leads the uh, to taking consideration. Of the, we saw the Dalai Lama's video last video. And he exactly point out this is for uh, uh, you know sir, from individual to uh, nation or world they must have come together pray for the world and each and every actions what country do for me 
is it not important what should i do for my country my nation my world so first of all you try to concentrate ourselves then we can lead the peace try to enlighten ourselves so you mean to say sir uh, a personal uh, uh, enlightenment or yeah, personal yeah. peace that can yeah. lead to communal peace I mean, yeah. okay thank you sir yeah, yeah. I think one more idea may be huh. that see, desire is part of our human makeup mm -hmm. because we are in complete beings. We always desire more. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, we are desiring nirvana. Yeah, that trusna, trusna. That, so we, so there, there's a question of a good desires and harmful desires. Desire. I think we need to differentiate between <laughs> them because it's ultimately good. we all desire fulfillment. We all desire nirvana. Yeah. However, you understand it. Yeah. So. Desire is needed to motivate us. Yeah. At the same time, a desire which is self-centered, yeah, that creates a problem when it's always focusing on the aham, whether yes. at the individual level or at the community level, okay. then we become a problem. We have a problem. Father, so there is a two, there is a two things which is I uh, want to share with all of you: credit and jealousy. Uh, my guru, Professor Deshpande sir, exactly described. That credit and jealousy, these two things lead to destruction, the communal harmony, the societal thing, destructions. That is the thing. Yeah. Because you also mentioned the credit, credit and jealousy, credit and jealousy should be stopped. Credit should be shared. Um, like a team, uh, like a team. So the focus should be not on. Me, my community, but our world community. World community, exactly. The entire world is one. One, you know? exactly. So the whole world is one kutum, so that is the idea. I and know. so from that perspective, working together to, yeah. for the benefit of all. Yes. Well, that is the kind of desire we need to cultivate. Cultivate. Because as you cultivate. mentioned also elsewhere, it is important that we learn how to deal with desire. Yeah, earlier, yeah. earlier I mentioned in my introductory part, each and every philosophy is very good. Hinduism, Sikhism, Jainanism, Buddhism, the all the great philosopher or founder, you know, there is a, a central point, focal point, is universal peace. You can uh, say about the Jesus, we, I quote in Jesus also. <laughs> My experience has been that all the religions are telling us how to be better human beings. You mean, exactly. So ultimately, it's manav dharma. Manav dharma. But father, philosophy is very good to read, very good to talk. But act according to philosophy is very difficult. To become Buddha is very difficult. Practice. You see, that is why what you emphasize, they are markers. Markers. Mark, 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 samadhi. You have to walk. Yeah. Then he chooses the, between the middle path, Madhyam Marga. Madhyam Marga. I think uh, Baba will explain very well because I'm son of him. Yeah, okay. Baba. Yeah, to me, thoda explain kela bara hui. Sali is thoda Marathi madhi so that Sali. Yes, yes. No, no. Baba is expert. Yeah. Uh, do I speak in Marathi or English? English, if you had, if you want to use a few words in Marathi, also no problem, but preferably in English. Because we have an audience from all over. Audience. Exactly here, I take the first clue that if the audience is uh, largely understanding Marathi, we speak in Marathi. When they're largely understanding in English, we speak in English. If they are largely understanding in Kannada, we speak in Kannada. That's <laughs> exactly the crux of entire Buddhism. That we the need to merge ourselves with the society and not stand as an individual away. Second, it's the self-satisfaction, self-satisfaction that I have this much and that is sufficient for me. That's my limit. And if anything comes beyond this, is fine, welcome. But I need not be jealous about someone who doesn't have or who has achieved something. I always tell Vilas that the jealousy or self-centricism is the seed of jealousy and one 
something which is far more important which lord buddha has said that the power and power centricism is the one which divided the society that i am superior than you he is superior than she she is superior than other one and this power centricism is something which disturbs the harmony of the society harmony of the family between brothers a a one brother becomes professor other brother is also doing very fine but then among the two there is a jealousy just because somebody got something it should be imbibed it should be accepted accepted as togetherness and we go ahead we forgot only one thing that we are all one we are all human being and going away from human spirit is something which destroys the society and brings in violence inside violence is an ultimate thing where a person it's difficult to argue when arguments end then only the hands begin and there exactly we need to bring everything to the, the argument to understanding and i always call what is called approachable adamancy one must be adamant on one's own principle but one must be approachable in order to listen to the others and the moment this path is broken we are away from lord buddha thank you for giving me this opportunity i am very happy that my son has explained everything in beautiful words thank you thank you anyone else anybody else wants to ask any questions can unmute yourself and speak I think, Dr. Adav, your presentation has been very lucid, very clear. So no one seems to have very any questions to ask. I want to thank you for your presentation, especially. You made us aware that Buddhism is not just a philosophy; it is something practical. It is a marga, yeah. marga, and in concrete life, how do we live out those principles of being kind, understanding, dealing with issues? You know. So, thank you very much for that clarification you gave us. Yeah. I also want to thank the management both of. the southern institute for the study of religion and the vincent college of commerce for their support for this whole enterprise i want to thank <laughs> gilby sir who has been a support right through all these programs and above all a special thank you to the audience because without an audience these programs are of no use we will keep once we edit the talks we will put them onto youtube and you are always welcome to access them on youtube also so the good work that has begun is not lost when the moment passes by but it is there for others to refer to so once again thank you all for your participation and thank you dr adav and dr deshpande the remote control behind the scene <laughs> for helping this process god bless and good night to everyone good night thank you father